Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of the remount is to transfer the occlusion on the restorations from the mouth back to the articulator for the correction of errors. These errors may have been incorporated in the fabrication of the casts, or they may have been due to changes that have taken place in the mouth since the initial registration. The remount is based on the idea that it's easier and more accurate to correct the occlusion on the articulator rather than in the mouth. In the mouth, we have problems with saliva, the tongue, and the patient's own protective mechanism, which can hide the occlusal interferences. The remount procedure should follow a logical sequence, otherwise the procedure will fail. The first step is to ensure that all the castings are fitted to the teeth. Once fitted, if the castings are not stable, they can be temporarily cemented onto the teeth. Once all the castings are fitted to the teeth, the initial centric relation contacts are located using shim stock and 28 gauge green wax. Since we want to transfer the maxillary cast to the articulator, we must take a face bow oriented to the terminal hinge axis. We then need to take three centric relation registrations for the purpose of mounting the mandibular cast on the articulator. Finally, we take the transfer impression, which allows us to take the castings from the mouth to the laboratory and then to make a model incorporating these castings. We can then mount these models on the articulator for adjustment. We will now go through the sequence of steps on a patient. The first stage is to place all the restorations in the mouth and to make sure they fit the teeth accurately. We can check the restoration fits the die accurately and then with a the restoration on the tooth, we can go around with the probe and palpate the marginal fit. Where the margins are subgingival, in addition to using the explorer to check the margins, we can use a proprietary fit checking material. One example is a material called Trial. This is nice and clean and easy to use. It sets up like a rubber gasket. We can place some of this material inside the crown and then when it's set, we can tell if we have a good marginal seal. If there are areas showing through and the crown is not going all the way down, then you would relieve these areas to get the crown to seat completely. Once we have finished, the trial cement peels out cleanly. Once you've made sure that all the restorations are seated, you can cement the crowns with a temporary cement because this will prevent the crowns from moving as we take the impression and also the temporary cement film thickness will approximate the thickness of the final cement. Once we are certain that the crowns are completely seated, the next step is to locate the initial contacts because when we mount the models for the remount procedure, we need to check the accuracy of the models and the mounting. We will practice with the patient to get the patient to open and close the same way each time. After practicing a few times, we will place a sheet of 28 gauge green wax on the occlusal surfaces and get the patient to tap tap a couple of times on the hinge axis. This gives us the first tooth contacts and we can see that our first contact is in the molar area. We then repeat this for the other side and keep the wax records for comparison later with the contacts produced on the articulator. We will now go around the shim stock and record where the initial contacts are on the mouth, making sure that each time the patient closes right back on the hinge with the same amount of contact force each time. The shim stock should be about the width of a cusp, otherwise you'll get three or four occlusal contacts at the same time.
For the next stage of the remount procedure, we want to make the necessary recording to transfer the maxillary model over to the articulator. To do this, we will use a standard face bow transfer. We put compound on the bite fork and then get the patient to close lightly into the compound. Once we have got the indentations of the teeth in the compound, we will let it chill and then trim it so that just the occlusal surfaces are visible. We then wash the compound with zinc oxide eugenol cement to accurately pick up the occlusal surfaces. We place the bite fork in the mouth and get the patient to close. Now that we have the bite fork accurately fitted to the teeth in the mouth, we can use the bite fork to verify the accuracy of our master model as well as for the face bow transfer. In the demonstration, we're going to record centric relation at an increased vertical dimension. So to avoid errors produced by recording centric relation at an open vertical dimension, we are going to have to orient the face bow to the terminal hinge axis. On this patient, we have already located the terminal hinge axis and the anterior reference point. When we mark the terminal hinge axis on the skin, the patient was sitting upright and looking straight forward. So we have the patient in the same position to accurately transfer these points again. The posterior reference pins are oriented to the terminal hinge axis and then the anterior reference pin is placed to lie on the anterior reference plane. So now we have our three reference points which gives us our face bow transfer. The next stage is to record centric relation. We will use an anterior jig and a wax wafer coated with a layer of zinc oxide eugenol cement. The jig is made out of duralay acrylic on the maxillary anterior teeth. While the duralay is still soft, we get the patient to close partly into this jig. Once the duralay has set up, we adjust the jig until the patient is hitting one point only in the center of the jig. We use articulating paper to, paper to mark this point and as you can see, the patient is hitting on one point only. There is a slight incline on the jig, which encourages the patient to go back into centric relation. The jig also gives us a constant position that the patient can go back to. We want the posterior teeth to be separated by enough space for a piece of wax. We will practice opening and closing a few times onto the jig before we take the centric relation registration using a wax wafer coated with zinc oxide eugenol cement. This method has been shown to be a successful and re reliable method of recording centric relation. In order to check the accuracy of our recordings, we will take three centric registrations. We can compare the three different recordings when we have mounted the models. Hopefully, these three records will be the same, or if two out of three agree, then we will go ahead and use them to mount the mandibular model. Now that the patient has had the jig between the teeth for some time, the muscles have had a chance to relax. This helps us to make sure that we are not recording a false muscle dictated position. We will now check that the wax does not interfere with closing. and so the cement does not stick to the teeth, we will put a little bit of Vaseline on the occlusal surfaces. So we can now go ahead and place some zinc oxide eugenol cement on the wax wafer. We just want enough to pick up the occlusal surfaces. We now place the wafer against the maxillary teeth and get the patient to close down onto the jig with a mild muscle force and then to hold this position until the material has set up. This is a hands-off procedure. Once the registration has set, we can take it out and trim it. We then replace the registration and check to see if it's an accurate one 
for making sure the patient can close into it without deviating from closure. To reduce distortion of the records, they should be stored in a humid condition. A way to do this is to wrap them in a cool, moistened towel until they're ready to be used. The final stage is now to take an impression and pick up all the restorations so that we can make the new master models. Before the patient came in, we made these acrylic occlusal keys on the laboratory models. We will now cement these to the teeth and they will become the basis of our transfer impression. The use of a graphic helps to explain the idea behind the transfer impression. We would like to accurately transfer the occlusal relationship of the crowns from the mouth to our master model. To do this we need a hard solid material but as you can see there are undercuts on the crowns and soft tissues which would prevent us from seating the crowns back into the impression material. Therefore to do a good transfer it really takes two different materials. One hard for the occlusal key and one elastic to allow the impression to be removed from the mouth and for the crowns to be reseated. We will use an acrylic occlusal key as the solid material to provide a definite seat for the crowns. This key is cemented to the crowns with zinc oxide eugenol cement to accurately record the occlusal relationships of the crowns. For all practical purposes, the cemented key is enough to do the remounts, and if you could make a model using just the key, with the crowns in it, then this would be satisfactory. However, to make this task easier, we can use the alginate in a stock tray to pick up the key and to block out the undercuts. The alginate is a soft material which will not interfere with the seating of the crowns back into the occlusal keys. It will tear in the undercuts rather than resist the seating of the crowns. There are a couple of other ways that this technique can be done. Some people have recommended the use of hydrocolloid with compound in the bottom of the tray. The compound provides a solid seat for the crowns and the hydrocolloid blocks out the undercuts and allows you to seat the crowns back into the impression. Others have tried to take an impression with one material, for example, a heavy body silicone. But this technique can be plagued by problems. If the material is going to provide a rigid seat for the crowns, then it's going to be so rigid that the crowns will not go back into the material. The use of a solid key material to obtain an accurate occlusal recording and a soft material to block out the undercuts is the ideal answer to the problem in taking the remount impression. We will paint some hold onto the acrylic key to help the alginate stick. It's a good idea to place a little Vaseline on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth so the cement does not stick to the teeth. We will then cement this key into place using a zinc oxide eugenol cement temp bond. We don't want to put too much material into the key, remembering we only want to pick up the occlusal surfaces. We just put a little bit of temp bond into the occlusal part of the key. And then we'll put the key into the mouth. Remember, it is the occlusal key that provides the rigid basis for transferring the occlusion over to the new model. So we seat the occlusal key onto the teeth. And leave it there to set. Once the cement has set, we try a stock tray for size to make sure that it fits over the occlusal key, and then we can take the alginate impression. Remember that it is the occlusal key which provides the firm, rigid seat for the castings. The alginate is just a block out material to help in making the model.
The occlusal key should come out in the impression, and we check that the key is solid in the base of the impression. We also check there are good indentations in the key to ensure a positive location of the crowns back into the key. We don't want the crowns to come out with the impression. If the crowns do come out with the impression, then the crowns should be removed and cleaned before they are reseated. Otherwise, unknown to us, they may be twisted or have moved in the impression. So now we will protect this impression with a damp towel and proceed with the mandibular impression. In the mandibular impression, we had two occlusal keys, one on either side of the arch. We generally only make keys to cover the restorations. The teeth without restorations are picked up in the alginate, and these are then made in dural acrylic. So here we have two occlusal keys with our zinc oxide eugenol cement index, and these are firmly attached to the alginate. We are now ready to go ahead and get these impressions ready to place the crowns in them and to make our master casts. If the patient has a good set of temporaries, we would now go ahead and temporize the teeth. We need to make sure the occlusion is good and that there are no occlusal interferences and that everything is going to remain the same from now till we're ready to bring the castings back to the mouth. Otherwise, changes could occur while we're trying to do the remount procedure. If you don't have temporaries, then you must do the remount procedure while the patient is sitting in the chair or waiting without temporary crowns on the teeth. So sometimes the procedure may take all day to complete, from taking the transfer impression, making and articulating the models, grinding in the case, and then cementing the case finally back in the mouth. If you have the temporaries, the procedure is much easier because you can relax, make the models at your leisure, and do the adjustments at your leisure. In this film, we have tried to emphasize that there is a logical sequence to the remount procedure. We should now have the location of the first contacts in the mouth, the maxillary cast transferred with a bite fork to check the accuracy of the models, three centric relation registrations, and finally the transfer impressions with a firm solid occlusal key. We can now go ahead with the laboratory aspects of the remount procedure. This is the second part of the remount procedure, and in this section we will cover the laboratory procedures. We will show the placement of the castings in the impression, blocking out of the undercuts with hydrocolloid material, and the fabrication of the model. We will then show how the accuracy of the model and mounting is verified. The first step is to make the model for the transfer. The metal dies that you have available can be used if they fit the crowns and have good retention. If the crowns are loose on the dies, then several other materials can be used to make the model. Ideally, the model material should hold the crowns firmly in position when the time comes to separate the crowns from the model, the crowns should come away easily. Velmix or regular dental stone can be used, but it's very difficult to get these materials out of the crowns at the end of the procedure. Duralay acrylic can be used, but once again, it's difficult to get out of the crowns. The inside of the crowns must be thoroughly blocked out with wax before the stone or acrylic is poured in. In this presentation, we will use a low fusing metal because it will hold the crowns firmly in place during the procedure and at the end, when we are finished, all that is necessary is to place the model in hot water. The metal melts and the crowns fall off cleanly. So now we will proceed with the laboratory phase for making the master models. We want to seat the restorations in the transfer impression but before we do this, we must make sure there are no loose pieces of zinc oxide eugenol cement floating around. The interproximal areas of the impression are removed 
and the occlusal surface cleaned to ensure there is nothing which will interfere with the seating of the castings. The castings are cleaned to make sure there is no cement on the occlusal surface. And then the castings are seated one at a time into the impression, making sure that each casting goes into place without any resistance. The casting should seat very firmly into the occlusal key. If any chips of zinc oxide eugenol cement break off, make sure they are cleaned out of the impression. We now have all the crowns seated in the impression. We check to make sure that none of the crowns bounce in the key. And we can now go around and loot some of the crowns together with sticky wax. This helps to keep the crowns in place if we touch them. Now we want to block out a lot of the undercut areas. Syringe hydrocolloid works nicely and all you need to do is to take the syringe of hydrocolloid and block out all the areas where we don't want the dye material. Now we can go ahead and make our master model using the low fusing metal. This is a lead based metal which melts at about 117 degrees Fahrenheit and we can pour this molten metal into the crowns to hold them in position. So putting the metal in a ladle we will heat this up and then pour the metal into the impression. Don't overheat the low fusing metal because there is little moisture in the alginate and if you pour the overheated metal into the impression then you'll get some bubbling and fizzing. The best thing to do is to heat the metal just enough to get it to a molten stage and then wait until it's almost ready to congeal. And Then you can start pouring the metal in one corner and then go all the way around the crowns. So it fills all the crowns. To help lock this section of the model to the base, we can put a couple of paper clips with loops in, in them and we just place them in the metal like this. If the metal has solidified, we can warm the clips up and then stick them into the metal. Once the metal has cooled, we can go ahead and pour up the rest of the impression with something like Velmix. We now have our two master models with the castings held rigidly in place. We want to check the accuracy of the models and we can do this using the compound bite fault registration which we took in the mouth. You can see how the cast fits nicely into the zinc oxide eugenol registration. The maxillary cast looks good and we will now check the lower. For the lower we have made the anterior guidance teeth out of a durable material such as Durally and using the bite fork we can see how accurately the lower cast fits into the registration. You want to make sure there is no zinc oxide eugenol cement on the occlusal surfaces of the teeth. Having verified the accuracy of our models, we can go ahead and mount the maxillary cast using the face bow. We have already mounted the maxillary cast on the articulator, so now we can select one of the three centric relation records and use it to mount the mandibular cast on the articulator. We can also use the centric relation record as another check of the accuracy of the models by making sure there is no warpage or rocking of the record in order to get it to fit the models. So now we have the upper and lower casts mounted on the articulator. The next thing we want to do is to check the accuracy of the mounting. A simple check can be done by loosening the top screw of the articulator. This allows the upper cast to move freely and then we can firmly seat the upper cast into the bite registration. As we tighten the screw, we can look at the space here 
and at the castings to check there is no pulling away of the castings out of the registration. You can see as you tighten it, there's no pulling away at the top. And the castings are still in the registration. Now, we can use either a split cast technique or the Danar VeriCheck to verify the accuracy of the three centric relation registrations. Here we'll use the VeriCheck. We will take the models off the articulator and then mount the models on the VeriCheck. The VeriCheck is similar to the articulator, except that in place of the condyl elements, it has some starlight and plates. We will select one of the centric relation registrations, and after checking there is no zinc oxide or eugenol cement or wax on the occlusal surfaces, the upper and lower casts are seated firmly into the registration. We then look at the areas where the starlight are. There is a piece of pressure sensitive paper on the table and by pressing down on each of the four starlight, we can make a little mark where the starlight contacts the paper. You can see here I'm making the mark. After we have recorded the position of this registration on the recording tables, we can remove the registration and replace it with the second centric relation record. put the sen second record on, and again the casts are firmly seated into the registration. Styli are then pressed down onto the paper to make the recording. and we can now compare the marks with the ones produced by the first record. You can see here how accurately we come in and we can assume that the centric relation records are very, very close. We lift the styli up. We now remove this centric relation registration and replace it with a third recording. We can see here that this recording is a little bit off. This is generally what you find. You will have two that are just right on and one recording that's a little bit off. So long as the casts are mounted with either of the two records which check out, then you can be satisfied that you have an accurate mounting. As a further check, we took a registration of the first contacts in the mouth using 28 gauge green wax. Now we can do the same thing on the articulator. Again, checking the occlusal surfaces are clean. 28 gauge green wax is placed over the occlusal surfaces. We will tap two or three times with about the same force as in the mouth. We'll then remove the wax and compare the contacts with the contacts recorded in the mouth. You can see that the contacts are similar. The patient tends to close a little bit harder than you do using the articulator and there's a little more skidding. But you can see the same general contacts here, there, here, and there. And these are heavier contacts. These contacts are comparable, indicating that we are very close in our mounting. In the mouth, we also went around with shim stock and recorded the contacts. And so we can go around checking to make sure the contacts are the same on the articulator as they are in the mouth. Now that we have verified the accuracy of the cast and the mounting, we are sure that what we have on the articulator is an accurate representation of the mouth, and we are ready to proceed with the occlusal adjustment. 
You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.